All right, guys, we are going to go ahead and get started in the H64D, get the engine started, take off, and then come back and do a shutdown. And uh, it's a little bit dark out tonight, but you need to be getting used to that because Apaches like to operate in the dark. All right, so we're in the cockpit. The first thing we're going to do is get our cockpit set up for turning on the battery. And I'm going to turn on my little flashlight here so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to kind of go around the cockpit and get things set up. Uh, for the lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these to night and turn down my brightness. I'm just kind of getting everything ready because as soon as I turn on the battery, we're going to get some light in here. I'm also going to go ahead and set my external lights. I'm going to change these to bright, the external nav lights. And I'll go ahead and turn up my floodlights and my primary lights. All right, once we've got that completed, we're ready to turn on the battery. We'll rotate that once to the battery position. And we can see that our floodlights and primary lights are starting to come on and uh, our UFD. All right, next thing we're going to do is go back here to our uh, lighting panel and we're going to hit that press to test. Make sure that all of our lighting in the aircraft lights up as it should and we'll release. And we'll take a look up here at our fire detection and extinguisher panel and we're going to test circuit one. And I've got three fire lights, aft deck, master warn, and audio. And now I'll test circuit two. Got our three fire lights, two discharge lights, aft deck fire, master warn, and our audio. All right, now that we've done all that, we're ready to uh, go ahead and start our APU. So we'll lift this little panel right here. We're gonna press and hold this button for a second. And we can see we've got APU start, APU power on messages. And there she goes. All right, once we've got the power to the APU applied, uh, we'll see uh, all of our electrical systems start coming to life. And we just kind of act these off, get them out of the way, and turn down our video brightness for our MPDs. Just kind of making some adjustments, let our eyes start adjusting. And uh, first thing I'm going to do, I want to move this uh, eye heads out of the way, but I'm going to go ahead and bore sight it first. I'm going to go down here to the weapons page, and we're going to hit bore sight. And as soon as I hit eye heads, you're going to see my cursor immediately move. To the bore site now which will appear there and that just enables me to very easily use my cursor enter button on my collective so i don't have to move my body uh, we're going to make sure that our primary lights are up which we did before uh, because otherwise you will not see the uh, circles in the bore site and i'm going to go ahead and hit uh, i heads and we can see these little circles appear so i'm just going to move so that those circles are kind of inside of each other move my line of sight and i'm going to hit that cursor enter button the message has gone away and now we have bore sighted the IHAD. So I'll go ahead and move that out of the way so we can see what we're doing. All right, if the APU is uh, kind of loud bothering you, of course, we can go ahead and close the door now. In real world, we would want to go ahead and check our uh, ECS and make sure that our temperature is coming down. We can set it to whatever temperature we want. But uh, of course, in DCS, that's not a big deal. Over here on our right MPD, uh, we'll immediately come to this page where this is asking us to load our data transfer unit. Uh, which, again, we don't have in DCS right now, uh, but if we did, we just go ahead and hit the master load and let it load up all the systems. You know, it takes a minute or two uh, to input everything that you might have uh, from that DTU card. But uh, instead, uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and start with our TSD, and uh, we'll bring up the util page and just making sure that we've got our keys loaded. Uh, we're picking up satellites, and it's still working on its position confidence. And while we're on this page, we can just uh, make any changes to our ASE auto page, which honestly, I just leave it uh, where it is. Uh, we can change our time from Zulu to local. We can change our system time, change the date. Uh, but everything else, uh, we're just going to let it run for a few minutes and get set up. All right, next, we'll set up our flight set page. So we're going to go to aircraft. We're going to go to flight. And then down here at the bottom, it says set. And here we've got a few options of things that we can mess with. We've got the high and low bug. So we can type in uh, an altitude that it'll give us a warning uh, that we're about to exceed the high. And then, of course, we could change the low. Uh, we can change our pressure uh, from inches to millibars. We can change our altimeter setting, change the field elevation uh, MSL. Uh, we can also come down here and change uh, our units of measure from kilometers to nautical miles. And the most important thing we do on this page now, and this is a, a new change based on the update, is a uh, radar altimeter. We've got that little donut. We need to make that solid. So we'll hit that and turn on the radar altimeter. All right, at this point, we're gonna kind of slide into what we call the DMS sweep or data management system sweep. And this is uh, essentially just running through all the different systems that we need to have set up. And of course you can split this up between the front seater and the back seater 
Uh, just kind of depends on the crew and who does what. Uh, typically, if I was sitting in the back seat, I'd like to get all my FLIR up and running and uh, like to get my communications up so I can start talking to people. In the front seater, he'd start messing with his TADs, getting it uh, squared away and uh, going through his weapons, getting them ready for a weapons ops check. Uh, we can see the map has popped up, so that's usually a good indicator that we have our position confidence and the INU is set. So we'll go ahead and start our DMS sweep here with the TSD. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go through my show pages. Um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a little bit so it doesn't bother me in flight. And we're going to go up here to the top where it says show. And these are all the things that we can set in the, uh, we're in the current nav phase. So the only thing I'm going to turn on is the CPG cursor. That way when his cursor is moving around on the TSD, I'll actually see it moving. Uh, you can turn on the HSI if you like. Uh, then we'll go to attack phase. And one thing I do like to turn on is the current route. And that'll show us our navigation route that we have uh, plugged into the system. We'll turn that back uh, to uh, nav phase and go back out of show. You can go into threat show and just kind of show some other stuff. But I, I don't mess, uh, recommend messing with it too much right now. Just kind of learning the basics. So we'll back out of show. And of course, if we did have any routes, we could go into the route menu. Make sure that we've got everything plugged in as needed. Add any waypoints that we need. Change anything that we need to do. Uh, but we'll go ahead and back out of all that and complete the TSD setup. All right, next we're going to go through a very abbreviated weapons ops check. Now, this is something that you would do pretty much by the checklist uh, with the other crew member. But we're just going to kind of go through it uh, real fast. So I'm going to bring up a weapons page. And I'm going to go ahead and ground override, bring the aircraft to arm. And the front seater would verify that we're in armed. And, you know, there's, there's sort of a process to it. Uh, I'm going to leave the aircraft arm just because there are some things going on with the current build. Uh, that we won't be able to see it if we put it on safe. And I am going to go ahead and bring up my IHADs just because we're going to look for some symbology, but I'll try and turn it down so it's not as uh, distracting. Okay, so we're on the weapons page. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and waz my gun and just go through my checks here. So I've got the uh, checkerboard armed. Of course, we would be looking for a checkerboard safe. We've got our inverse video, meaning we've selected the gun. We've got our burst limits set. Uh, we're in mode norm. Uh, let me unlock my head here. We've got mode norm, which means the gun is moving with my head. And normally the front seater would be able to feel it and kind of know that it's moving. Uh, but we'll go ahead and mode fixed. And I'm just going to look up. And you can see that uh, crosshair right there. That's the fixed uh, mode reticle. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to norm. And you can see that that crosshair has disappeared. And uh, if we want to change our manual range, which I typically do to about 800 meters... And I know some people are kind of uh, up in arms that they think that it should stay in auto all the time. I'll just tell you that auto is not that great of a feature. Uh, if you're in terrain with, you know, sort of undulating terrain, that auto can screw you up. So just setting a manual range that you are uh, sort of mentally boresighted to can be uh, just as helpful, if not better. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and was the rockets. Looking for the same thing. We're checkerboard arm. We've got inverse video. Uh, we've got uh, 32 PDs and six Illum rockets. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the PDs as my primary. I'm going to set my quantity to 2, and uh, my manual range is still 800. Acquisition source, we'll worry about that later. Uh, but what I am going to do is take a look at my symbology, and I do have the symbology. And I'm going to look outside the aircraft, and as I move my head, we can see that the pods are moving, articulating with my head. So uh, At this point, the front seater, we could do a co-op check and just make sure that everything's working, but I don't have a front seater right now. So we'll go ahead and was missiles. And same deal. We're looking for the checkerboard safe or armed in this case. We've got the inverse video. Uh, we can see that our missiles are set primary alpha code and our uh, alternate as Bravo code. We have semi-active laser. Uh, mode is in normal. Trajectory is direct. Uh, we can see that our laser rangefinder designator is set to alpha as well as our laser spot tracker. Now, uh, this is going to change based on who you're flying with and what codes the aircraft might be assigned and all that good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our laser spot tracker to our wingman's. We're going to assume our wingman is up code Bravo and our uh, our code is code Alpha. And we can double check those that, okay, code Alpha is 1688, Bravo is 2111. Uh, we're going to go to code. We're going to go set LRFD. We're going to change that to set LST. We're going to select Bravo. We're going to back out of code. And now we can see that our laser spot tracker is set to Bravo. And our LRFD is set to alpha, meaning when we shoot the laser, we're going to hit alpha. When we use the laser spot tracker, we will pick Bravo. Of course, at the time of making this video, the laser spot tracker is not active. Uh, but just get into the positive habit transfer right now. I'm going to go ahead and dewaz the missiles and uh, other things that we can check while we're here, of course, is just making sure that we've got our, uh, our chaff loaded. 
appropriately and we can double check that we are up a site HMD and our acquisition source is fixed. And once we're complete with weapons op checks, if we do have another guy in the aircraft, he can uh, come over here and uh, bring the ground override off and it should automatically bring the aircraft to safe. All right, from here, I'm going to go ahead to the uh, ASC page and we can see we can arm the uh, chaff. We can again change that auto page feature. I'm going to go to the util right here, utility page. We can do uh, programming based on the uh, chaff, whatever we think is appropriate. I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, but right here, radar laser warning receiver, we're going to check that and make that donut solid. And I'm just going to make sure that the audio is turned up down here on my audio control panel. And since we're messing with ASC, I'm going to go ahead and bring this to uh, power it on. And I like to just hit the test, uh, even though it does do a built-in test on power up. I'm just going to hit that test anyway and uh, make sure this middle switch is turned up to CMOS make any adjustments to the audio and the lamp as required. And we can see that we are getting the uh, ASC box and we're already getting some indications of a uh, radar off the nose. Now we didn't hear any audio and that's another thing that I do want to talk about is uh, when the aircraft is in cold start, all of these switches are turned down, uh, which you're probably going to have to change. So go ahead and turn up your master and then hit all these squelch uh, switches to get rid of that nasty squelch sound. And then, of course, you can make adjustments to your uh, radio knobs here. But, yeah, you got to make sure that that master's turned up. Otherwise, you're not going to hear anything. And uh, same with uh, all the things on the bottom if you want to listen to them. All right, so speaking of radios, we're going to go back over here. We can back out of the util, back out of the ASC. And uh, we don't need to do that, though. We can just hit these uh, action buttons here. So we'll go to comm and bring up our comms page. And uh, what we can do here, there's there's a lot of options, a lot of things that none of this really works or matters in DCS. Uh, the only thing that I really want to draw your attention to is right here at the bottom where it says manual. Uh, and that's where we're going to manually input our frequencies. So you can see that we've got our VHF, UHF, FM1, FM2. Uh, we can type in a frequency here and then hit the radio and it'll pop into there. Or we can hit the button here and it'll activate the keyboard. We type the frequency in. Now with this uh, model of Apache, the frequency is going to go into the primary. And then you've got the uh, standby radio over here. Uh, later models, this was changed. Uh, this is kind of annoying. Uh, but uh, the way this works is you've got a swap button over here. So let's say we've got uh, uh, ground is on a 121.0. We've got tower on 121.5. So we can uh, talk to ground, taxi out. And then when we're ready to talk to tower, we just hit that swap button. And it brings up the 121.5 or whatever we've got in the standby. All right, so that's pretty much all of our DMS sweep. We've set up all our systems, and really the kind of way to look at it is just these action buttons here. So FCR, we don't have installed. Weapons, we've done. TSD, we've done. Uh, comms, we've done. Uh, video, we can mess with that if we need to. We can just bring up the TADs. That way we're ready to go here in the back seat. And then uh, we can bring back to the aircraft, and that's where we're going to start uh, doing the engine start. But first, I want to make sure that my FLIR is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put my iHads back on. And this is where we're just going to make sure that all of our FLIR is working. So we've got our MVS mode switch down here. We're going to go to Norm. And that is going to activate the Pinvis into our HDU. And we're just going to make sure that everything's moving the way that it should. We can make adjustments down here at the uh, video panel and do anything we need to do to change the way the FLIR looks. We can also uh, change our polarity, which is located on our collective, and change it to Black Hot see which one we like better depending on the conditions i'll leave it on white hot for now and uh, just making sure that everything's moving and then what we can do is go ahead and swap to the tads that switch is also located on the collective and now i'm just verifying that i have the tads and the front seater has the pinvis and then i'll go ahead and swap back to the pinvis and uh, we can turn that off we can set it to fixed mode which is really just going to fix it forward uh, it's more of an emergency procedure than anything else. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn the MVS mode off. And like I said, if you're in the front seat, uh, you're just going to make sure that your TADS is uh, the way you want it. Make any adjustments just like we did with the uh, MVS. And of course, at some point, you're going to want to uncage your standby attitude indicator and get that set up. All right, so as we discussed in the back seat, setting up the front seat is a lot of just kind of the same thing. You're getting, uh, you know, all your lighting set up in the cockpit. You're setting up all your systems, going through the TADs and making sure that your FLIR is set up. Uh, of course, bore sighting your IHADs and uh, doing your uh, NVS ops checks uh, with your NVS mode here going to norm and everything. Uh, but one thing I do want to uh, just kind of highlight is just a couple things. 
So we'll bring up the iHads. We can see that it's, it's very bright right now. Uh, you do use the symbology switch. However, uh, this toggle is not working until you turn on the TDAC. So we'll go ahead and go to night phase or night mode. And then uh, you can see that, that symbology is changed here. So I know some people were looking for a dial uh, just like they have in the back seat, but it's all right here on the TDAC. And then all this other stuff has to do with the screen itself. Uh, the other thing I want to bring your attention to in the front seat when we're doing our uh, ops checks and getting everything set up is uh, we'll go to our weapons page. We're going to go to the util. And uh, the one thing that we do need to turn on and make sure is on is our laser. Once again, we've got that little donut there. So we'll go ahead and hit... Uh, that and turn that to solid and that'll arm the laser for us and we can continue on with the rest of our DMS sweep and getting set up in the front seat. All right, so we've got everything set up. We're ready for an engine start, uh, but first we're going to do our flight controls check. So I'm just going to kind of do a sweep of my controls, make sure that everything is working the way that it should. And this, of course, we would be doing a bucks check, a backup control system, which is a fly-by-wire system. We'd go through a series of checks and the uh, controls would uh, move by themselves and we just kind of stay out of the way uh, but we don't need to do that in DCS so we're going to go ahead and get ready for our actual engine start all right first thing we're going to do is announce uh, to the world that we're about to start our engines and uh, one way we can do that and it's kind of SOP driven but back here at our anti-collision lights I'm going to go ahead and turn those to red uh, because it's night and if it was daytime we'd uh, typically turn them to white but again that's usually SOP driven based on the unit that you're in now at this point, the crew chief, who's been outside, he's hooked up to the wing. Uh, he's going to move over to this side. He's listening to us talk, and he's going to be observing the number one engine as we get ready to start. He's going to give us our clear call, and he's just making sure that, you know, fire isn't shooting out of the engine, that the louver doors are moving the way they should while the engine spools up. And uh, we're just going to tell him that we're ready to go. We've got our engine page. We've got our fuel page, and we are going to double check our range of motion on the power levers. Just something I used to do in the aircraft. Uh, no requirement to do that. Go ahead and turn that off and we'll get ready for an engine start. I'm going to make sure that the rotor brake is in the off position and then I'm going to motor the starter and look for a rise in NG and we'll go ahead and start the engine. All right, there's my rise in NG. I brought the power lever forward, released that switch and we're just going to watch the engine spool up and monitor the TGT, NR, MP, NG and oil pressure. There's a the light in the can. You can hear the engine starting up. TGT's on the rise. NG's on the rise. MP. And our oil pressure. Starting to get our little torque fluctuations. Got our cross feed changeover. So the first uh, engine is taking out of the, the uh, forward cell. And of course, looking for the blades to start spinning, which they are. All right, we're going to continue to watch, make sure that our NG stabilizes. And that looks pretty good to me. Everything has stopped moving. So we got a good start on engine one. And we'll go ahead and get started on engine two. Same process as before. However, it won't take as long because the blades are already spinning. So engine two doesn't have to work as hard to get uh, everything going. So same deal. We're going to hit the uh, igniter to starter. The Horizon NG. GT is good. Moving the power lever to idle. Release the switch. And continue to monitor. And there's the light on engine two. Got a rise in MP, rise in NG, rise in TGT. Oil pressure's on the rise. Be looking for the torque sharing between the two engines to keep the rotor spinning. And we just continue to monitor. All right, looks like we've got stabilized engine number two, MP, NG, oil pressure's looking good. Temperatures are looking good. We've got torque sharing, so the engines are working together. Uh, to uh, keep the main rotor spinning and uh, that looks like a good engine start once again we'll double check the rotor brake is off and I'm gonna go ahead and bring the power levers to fly and I'm just observing make sure that torque doesn't go crazy the NR just making sure that everything's kind of smooth and power levers are to fly and we're showing 101 on the NR everything's looking good all right, so once we have completed that engine start, we'll do a quick check up here on the UFD. Make sure we don't have any warnings, cautions, or advisories. We've got the APU on, so we'll go ahead and turn off the APU and flip that switch cover back down. And now the APU is off. The only thing we've got is tail wheel lock select, which is it's going to show because we're on the weight on wheels. Uh, so now we can release the parking brake. 
and we can uh, go ahead and start our mission. Now, one thing we need to do once we're up in mission, and it, there's some debate or uh, really just different ideas of, of how to do this, but your ox tank, I'm going to turn off my pinvis so we can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but we've got our ox tank. That doesn't normally come on on its own. Uh, so what we've got to do is turn that on. We'll just hit this button right here on the fuel page at the left and uh, fill that little donut. We can see those lines. And that's letting us know that the uh, ox tank is going to start transferring fuel uh, as required. Uh, again, some debate on when to do that. Uh, typically, guys would do that within the first 30 minutes of takeoff um, just to make sure that the ox tank is actually transferring fuel because nothing's worse than uh, finding out that you're out of fuel, even though you've got 600 and some odd pounds uh, sitting in the ox tank. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and bring the aircraft back in for a shutdown. Uh, a few things we want to double check before we land the aircraft. We'll make sure that the tail wheel is locked and the light is out. We can see that the uh, tail wheel light down there by the MVS mode select switch is not lit up, meaning the uh, tail wheel is locked. And we want to make sure that the uh, parking brake handle, which is kind of hard to see right now, uh, is still in so that we don't have the parking brake set. We want to make sure that uh, the weapon systems are safe and nothing is armed or wazzed, uh, particularly the gun, because if the gun is pointing down, and you uh, touch down, uh, you could jam the gun uh, right up into the aircraft. We'll go ahead and bring our aircraft down onto this taxiway and taxi our way back into parking. All right, so we've got the aircraft on the ground. We've still got that tail wheel locked, which is the way that we want it uh, while we're doing a straightaway. I'm gonna bring in just a little bit of power so that we can start to taxi forward. And then what I and a lot of people tend to do is go ahead and turn on the APU. It's kind of hard to see. Let me turn on my flashlight here. Make sure we're not running off the taxiway. All right. And uh, APU power on, power start. And we're going to start to get some audio about it because the aircraft is light on the wheels. And the aircraft doesn't want the APU to be on while you're flying. So you're going to get that ack every now and then, that, that, uh, that, that uh, sound indicating that something is wrong. And it's just letting you know that the APU is on. Uh, but we want to go ahead and get that started. That way, once we get to parking, we can go ahead and bring the uh, engines offline. All right, now we're getting into our parking spot. And uh, if we're using the tailwheel, we want to make sure that we go ahead and hit that uh, tailwheel lock select. Let the aircraft drift forward a little bit. Make sure that that tailwheel light goes out. And now we'll go ahead and bring the aircraft to a stop by using, uh, bringing our collective down and using our wheel brakes as required. And we'll go ahead and uh, turn on our flashlight, move the MVS so we can see what's going on. And we're going to go ahead and set that parking brake. And now we are ready for shutdown. We've already got the APU on, so we've got all the power we need. We're going to go ahead and bring the uh, power levers uh, back to idle and start that two-minute engine cooldown. All right, so once we've got the APU on, we start the uh, two-minute engine shutdown. Uh, really, all we're doing is just uh, doing some tidying up with the systems, turning things off that need to be off. Like, we'll turn off our ASE. We can turn this off here. Uh, the front seater can turn off everything that he needs to. We can uh, start saving uh, our videotape recording if we need to uh, bring any of that in for debrief. And really just kind of cleaning up the cockpit, making sure that everything is good to go. And now what we're going to do, uh, that two-minute cooldown has completed. We're going to go ahead and bring these uh, power levers to off. And the engines are off. AP was still running, so we're going to keep our power. And we're just going to watch and make sure everything is uh, is de decreasing as it should. And now what I'm going to do is uh, we're below 50%, so I'm going to bring the uh, rotor brake to brake and help us get that rotor stopped. And typically what I would do uh, is leave my finger on the rotor brake in real life because you don't want to leave it on. Uh, it can run down the, uh, the accumulator pressure for the uh, hydraulics. So we're going to leave that... Uh, uh, leave our finger on there so we don't forget and kind of screw the other guys get behind us uh, if they get this aircraft. And we'll wait for these blades to stop. All right, blades have stopped. Go ahead and turn that rotor brake back to off. And uh, if everything is shut down in the front seat, I'm good in the back seat. I'm going to go ahead and turn the APU off. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, battery off. And I'll meet you guys outside. All right, with future hot fixes, I'm sure we'll have a few added uh, systems that we've got to turn on during the engine startup sequence. But essentially, it's all the same. Just get everything going prior to takeoff. Get out there and start putting warheads on foreheads. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Take it easy.